Hi, first grade, we're back for another math lesson. And today we're going to use this awesome scale that I'm really excited to show you guys. What you can have next to you, because we may use it, we may not, kind of just depending, because we're mostly going to use the scale, but I may also use the scale and use the number bond kind of interchangeably or to show you. Have next to you, with, oh my goodness, not math, math, work math, I was combining the two, math, work math number six, and your cubes. Have it near you just in case we do use it because we might end up using it just depending on what we get to. And I'm going to do a lot of sharing my screen, unsharing my screen just so that you can see me full picture when I'm using the scale because I think it is so, so cool. So let me start by sharing my screen. And let me explain to you what we're kind of going to do with this scale. And actually, I will probably use my number bond to help me remember what we're working with. So you may not need yours, but if you want to work with it while I'm doing it too, that's fine. So here we go. It says engage. We're going to engage. Watch your teacher put a little weight, and I'll show you a weight on one side of a balance. Now watch your classmate put two. Now it's going to still be your teacher since we don't have classmates here. On the other side, where else can you place the weight? Share your thinking with your classmates. We're going to kind of hop into this learn section down here. What I'm going to write, because they have it on there, and then I'll stop sharing my screen. They have seven as the whole, and they have four and three as the two parts. And what we're going to talk about is when we have parts that, when joined together, equal the whole, we are equal on both sides. And that's what I want to show you right now, is that no matter if you have two weights or one weight, as long as they equal the same number, they will be equal on both sides. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Here is the awesome weight that I'm talking about. So it looks like this. And you are going to notice that it goes from one to 10 on both sides. So over here, I'm going to put the two parts. Over here, I'm going to put the whole. And I want you to see how it balances out. And you'll see if I put two parts that do not equal the whole, this will not be balanced out. So if you know they weigh less, it'll be dipping this way. If they weigh more, it'll be dipping this way. And I'll kind of show you some examples of that. So we have these awesome weights. The ones that have the dots on them, I'm going to make the parts. And then the one that does not have the dot on it is going to be our whole. So here we go. The example from our book had our whole as seven. So right now I'm going to start with that, put our whole as seven, and you'll see right away it's not even. It's dipping over this way because there's more weight over here than there is over here. We have zero over here right now, and we have seven over here. But then we see that our two parts are four and three. I want you to watch what happens. I'm going to put one weight on the four. It still is not evening out yet because there's only four on this side and seven on this side. It's not even. But if I put it on the three, watch what happens. Do you see how it starts evening out like this? Now, I will say one thing too, for me holding it in the camera, it's not on a flat surface, but you can see like, again, if I take this four off, watch what happens. It dips this way because seven is a greater number than three. So this is a heavier weight over here. But once I put this back on, it evens out because four and three make seven. So over here, we have seven with our four and three. Over here, we have seven with just our sevens. You see that they equal out over here. Both sides are equal, which is why our scale is balanced. All right, let's go ahead and take these off right now. And I'm going to share my screen again so we can take a look at this next part that goes with it. Okay, for this next part down here, it says use the scale to make number bonds of seven. What other numbers make seven? Now, what you could do with me right now, if you want to go ahead and be hands on and use your cubes and your math work mat number six, use your number bond, is you can go ahead and put seven cubes in your whole section of your number bond because that's what we're going to work with right now. Then you can have seven cubes just outside of it because we will be working and putting them into our number bond and I'll kind of show you. I'll do that over here too with my cubes. So I'll put seven outside of here.
And we're going to be working with our number bond here and also with the balance to show different ways that we can make seven. So let me stop sharing my screen. All right, here I am again. So this will be cool for us to see numbers that make seven. So what do you think? What's an example of a number or two numbers or two parts that we have that can make seven? Remember, if we have seven over here, we can go ahead and just break up our seven over here and put them into our two part sections. So how about we start with, and you can move this with me as we're doing it, we already did four and three, so let's do something else. How about we do two, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. Two and five, let's do that. And how we're going to check if two and five make seven, we're going to check it with our scale. So now let's see. Uh-oh, if I don't drop it first. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to put this back on the number seven. So here we go, we're back on the number seven over here. And over here, I'm going to put my two parts. So two and five, and let's see what happens. Good, so you see how it balances out, it starts evening out. So that tells us right there that two and five make seven. Very good, because if I were to take one off, you see it dips over to the seven because two is a less, lesser number than seven. Seven's a greater number than two, right? And then if I put this back on my five, we see it evens out. So good, five and two make seven. That would be an example of two parts that we can have in our number bond with our whole of seven. Let's take a look at some other examples. So I'm going back over here and I'm just going to take these back out and remake my number train of seven. We've already done four and three and we've already done two and five. What if I put all seven? I have all seven. And remember, it's seven, and this is still a number. It's the number zero. Very good. So what you're going to notice is I'm only going to have one part on here, but we know that that other part is also zero. So look, we have seven, and then when I do this, it balances out, and it would be seven and zero make seven. Our two parts would be seven and zero. All right, awesome. Let's do one more example, then we're going to do a couple more on another page, and then I'll give you your assignment. Okay, let's try another one. So go ahead and take your seven cubes out of your number bond. And this time, I'm going to put one cube in my top part circle, and then I'm going to put, it's one, two, Three, four, five, six. Very good, six. So we have one in our top part circle. We have six in our bottom part circle. Let's make sure that those two make seven. So I'm going to put my one part, I'm going to put my one part weight on the one, my other part weight on the six, and you will see that, yep, they start evening out. Awesome, and we see that they do, in fact, make seven. So one and six make seven. All right, you can go ahead and clear your number bond. I'm going to put this off to the side for just one second. And I'm going to share my screen again, and let's take a look at the next page that we are going to work with. Okay. We are going to try these. So number one, I'm going to set it up on the dry erase board. We'll, we'll work through it together and then we will go ahead and do the next one and the next one and the next one. So here we go. We have three examples we're going to do. We have five and one. And then we need to figure out what our whole is. So then we have five and one make. So here's what would be nice for us to do. Okay, for this one, I would say I have the number five written, I have the number one written, but maybe I'm also going to put five cubes in my part section up top and one cube in my part section down at the bottom. If you'd like to do that, go ahead and do that with me on your number bond. You don't have to write any numbers. Just put five cubes in your part section on the top and then one cube in the part section on the bottom. And then we're going to move them over 
to our whole section and see how many we have when we go ahead and join those two numbers. So let's move our five over. And this works out nicely because I still have my number five written over here. And then let's move our one over. And let's see if we count these. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we see there's six there. Let's check our work. How we're going to check our work is we're going to check our work with our balance. So let's go ahead and start by putting our two parts. So we said that our part was five, or our parts are five and one. You'll see that now it's dipping this way because there's more weight over here than there is over here. And let's see, I'm going to put it over here. Let me switch hands really quick. I'm going to put it on to my six and we'll see that amazing, it balances out. Now here's something I wanna show you. What if we didn't count right? What if we accidentally counted wrong and we thought that seven? We thought that five and one made seven. Let's see what happens. You will see that if I put it on the seven, it does not balance out. It dips all the way down to the seven side because seven is greater than six. And we figured out that five and one actually make six. So if I take this off again and I put it back on my six, you'll see that it balances out because five and one make six. All right, awesome. Let's do the next example that is on our page. So here we go. Let me share my screen again. <clears throat> okay, also too, it says five and one make. I would write the number six on that line. So I just would write five and one make, and then I would write the number six on that line. Okay, let's take a look at the next one and we'll get that set up. Okay, the next one says four and two. So right now, while I'm getting this set up, if you wanna put four cubes in your top part circle of your number bond and two cubes in your bottom part circle of your number bond, then I'm going to put four cubes over here and two cubes over here. All right, and I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, let's talk about this one. So you'll see we have four and two. If we move our four cubes over here into our whole section, and we move our two cubes over here into our whole section, and then we count them together, we have four, five, six. We'll see that we also got to a whole of six and let's double check it over here. So I'm going to start by putting my two parts that we knew that we had. So our four and our two, and I apologize, I'm trying to do this backwards. So sometimes you'll see I drop things. It's hard for my hands to work. Okay, oh, not here. Here we go, four and two, and then we said we thought that the hole was six. So let's see if we can confirm that. All right, what do you see? Is it balancing out? Yes, we see it's balancing out. So we can confirm that four and two make six. Again, if I was saying, okay, well, I thought that four and two made eight. Let's see what happens. Boom, dips all the way that way because four and two do not make eight. Eight is a greater number than what four and two make when joined together. Four and two make six. Again, if I put it on the six we see right here, it balances out. So then on my line, I would write four and two make, and then I would write the number six. Okay, let's do one more example, and then I will show you your assignment for today. So I'm going to share my screen again. <clears throat> and what I want you to do is go ahead and clear your number bond. And you are going to see that this one looks a little different. Okay, in your one part section of your number bond, you are going to put three cubes. So I wrote the number three, and then I'm going to put three cubes. Then you are going to notice that we do not have another part, but we have our whole. So I want you to put nine cubes inside your whole section of your number box. You should have three cubes in one of your part sections of your number bond, and you should have nine cubes 
in your other, in your whole section. Okay, and then what I want you to also do is put nine cubes somewhere else outside of your whole and part section of your number bond so that we can work with them. So make a number train of nine somewhere off of your number bond. And I'm going to show this two ways. First way that we can do this is we can go ahead and say, okay, well, there's nine up here. One of my parts is three. So I know that I don't need three. I'm going to take those three away and move them over here. And then you'll see right here, I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we count them and say, okay, well, we have three. Let's count and see if it makes sense. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. We confirm that three and six also make nine. The other way that you can do it If you do not want to have to move or have extra cubes, is you can move them, right? So you could say, well, I have one, two, three over here. <clears throat> I'm going to not drop them like I did. Oh man, I'm dropping things today. I'm going to move this up to the top and then I'm going to take whatever is left and put it into my other part section. And then I will see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Visually, it might look a little bit better if you do it the first way I showed, where you made your number tree and you moved it, because then when you are done, you see the three, you see the six, and you see the nine in there, okay? And then let's double check it with our balance. All right, boys and girls, man, it must be a clumsy day for me, because I really am just dropping everything everywhere. Okay, so let's see if we can check our work. So we said that six and three make nine. So let's see if I put this over here, do they balance out? Yes, in fact, they do balance out. So we can confirm that six and three make nine. So over here I have three and six, or six and three make nine, and down here in the other part section of my number bond would be a six. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about our assignment for today. I'm going to share my screen and show you that. Okay, here we go. So what you are going to notice is that you have a couple different number bonds, okay? You are going to notice in every single number bond, you have your whole, but you do not have any parts. Here's what I'm going to say. You get to put any parts that you would like to that equal up to whatever the whole is. That means there's not one right or one wrong answer. So there could be a couple different answers, like we talked about when we were working with seven. We could have four and three that makes seven. We could have six and one that makes seven. We could have seven and zero that makes seven. So my suggestion for you is to have your three or whatever your hole is here, then make a number train of that hole and then work on moving parts of that number train into your part circles and see what you get. And then what you'll do is you'll write those numbers here and then you'll write those numbers here too because it says blank and blank make three. So whatever you moved into these circles to make three, you will also write on these lines. And then it's the same thing for number two, but your hole is six. Same thing for number three, but your hole is nine. And then the same thing for number four, but your hole is 10. And if you do not have the ability to print this out, do not worry, just please number it, draw the number bond, and then also write out this sentence on a piece of paper. All right, first grade, I look forward to seeing your awesome work that you do, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.